Obviously, the best players pull off the best moves, but these moves take a level of skill well beyond a normal player, even an abnormal player. Let's talk about the ridiculous techniques players have figured out that have just broken games in half. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 insane abilities unlocked only for hardcore players. Starting off at number 10, the Yeet Hook from Doom Eternal. Let's start this one off with one of the best speedrun tricks from the last few years, the Yeet Hook. The basic concept's simple, you use the grappling hook ability of the super shotgun to slingshot yourself much further than you're supposed to. When performed correctly, it looks absolutely completely insane, and in certain situations it allows players to skip massive sections of levels. Mostly, it's just a way to get around faster and more effectively navigate certain fights. But in certain circumstances, you can actually just bypass fights altogether. Also, you can skip some annoying platforming sections or really just large chunks of levels. And some people make it look easy, but the timing and movement can be super difficult to master, especially because there's no simple trick to pull it off. It's just something you eventually just have to get the feel for. Definitely a hardcore player one, but also amazing to see in action. At number 9, the Buffered Spin Jump Ground Pound from Super Mario Odyssey. This is a game that is well known for its elaborate movement system. I and mean, there's so much you can do even as a regular player, but probably the coolest and most impressive movement ability is this one called Bumps for short. It's exactly what it sounds like. You do a buffered spin jump, then you ground pound, which allows you to start rolling at full speed instantly. The buffering part is that you can only perform this trick while in a cutscene, but with the right timing it gives Mario a ridiculous boost to speed immediately after the cutscene ends. It sounds simple but just watch what people can do with it and it's absolutely insane. It's just a constantly rolling ball of chaos zipping around the screen at nearly out of control speeds. I mean if Mario could do the spin dash in the 1990s everything would look different now. At number 8 is the kick glitch from Mirror's Edge, the bread and butter move of Mirror's Edge speedrunning, probably also its most insane. It's literally just a double jump that allows you to break all of the rules of physics. This is another one of those tricks that requires a righteous, serious dedication of precision and skill. That's the best I can describe it, because it's, it's not an easy one to pull off. To even think about doing it, you have to first perform a move called the wall run kick, where if you wall run then kick in the middle of it, an invisible platform will appear under you at a certain point when you fall. The invisible platform is only solid for three frames, so the timing for the kick glitch, like I said, requires a righteous and serious dedication to precision. If you manage to jump while it is there, you can literally jump through the air. On consoles, it's nearly impossible to pull off, by the way. But on PC, it is a lot easier. That's not to say it's easy, but you can bind the scroll wheel to jump and roll the wheel after a wall run kick. Um, it's still a pain to pull off for all of us mere mortals, but there's at least something you can do to make it easier on PC. At number 7 is Bowlift Smuggle Sliding from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, known as BLSS for short. This is another bizarrely named trick, it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It makes it so Link can glitch through the air, avoiding contact with pretty much everything, and it makes getting around the world a uh, cinch. Super simple. It's one of the abilities that's basically just an arcane series of actions that seem impossible, and most players wouldn't even try it. The gist of it is you have to pick up an object while pulling out the bow at the same time, then jump and pause at the same time to trigger the glitch, then run to a ledge and jump to start flying. Once you're there, you gotta keep waggling the controller because if it goes into the neutral position, Link will just fall right back down to the earth, but while he's in the air, you're basically untouchable. Good luck. It's gonna frustrate you. It's not impossible. None of these are impossible, but they are gonna frustrate you. At number 6 is the Ultra Dash from Celeste. Uh, just finishing Celeste normally requires a pretty high level of skill, but this move is definitely for Celeste experts only. On paper, not that exciting. Basically, the Ultra Dash is a move that gives you about 1.2 times speed boost every time you pull it off, so like, it doesn't really sound like the unlocking of the ultimate power. But the real impressive stuff comes when players manage to string together multiple Ultra Dashes, making it so they can accomplish normally impossible possible feats and generally get through the game at crazy fast speeds. Uh, here's how the trick works. The player has to perform a down diagonal dash into a platform, 
then with the proper timing, jump so that they keep generating momentum. As with most of these abilities, the timing window on these things is incredibly tight. If you're off, like, at all, you'll just do a normal move, and all that extra momentum will just go away. Combined with intentional tricks like wave dashing and the hyper dash, the ultra dash makes Celeste has some of the most impressive speedruns out there. At number five is Tag Barrel Storage from Donkey Kong 64. This one's pretty much just insane. It's one of those bizarre speedrunning tricks that just barely makes any sense at all. So bear in mind as I attempt to describe it here, I, I, I will do what I can. But if it still doesn't make sense, do not blame me. That is the whole deal with this thing. Uh, how it works is that if you perform certain moves while jumping into a tag barrel, which is the thing that lets you swap characters, then you can make it so you can actually move around while in tag barrel state. If that doesn't make sense to you, um, the player character remains tag barreled. Obviously, you're just supposed to remain frozen, but with tag barrel storage, you can actually move around and weird stuff starts happening. The trick mostly causes the game to just glitch out like crazy, but if you combine tag barrel storage with another move called telegrabbing, a skilled player can pretty much skip the entire game. Like seriously, if you are good at these ridiculous and stupid tricks, you can beat the game in literally minutes. That's how broken Donkey Kong 64 actually is once you start breaking it in this way. Also, it's got a lot of other ways that it's broken. We're not going to get into them uh, because that's not the point of this video, but rest assured. And number four is the Super Swim from Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. This is a classic game, but sailing can get old after a while. With this trick, travel time becomes a thing of the past because it makes it so Link will swim at ludicrous speed through the world. Uh, no, he doesn't go plaid, but uh, he might as well. It's so fast, it's honestly incredibly disorienting. Good luck even finding where you want to go, honestly. If you're skilled enough to pull this move, and I use the term creatively here, um, if you're skilled enough to pull this move off then you could probably figure out which direction to point at to travel to whatever island you want to go to uh, and and you get really got to do that because link basically becomes a projectile at this point this trick works because of a simple oversight on the part of the developers there's no cap on speed when you're swimming backwards for a normal player that's never going to happen but for speedrunners, that means they can generate as much negative speed as they want by constantly turning back and forth while pause buffering it requires very tight timing and it'll probably start to hurt your fingers but if you keep doing it, you'll build up a truly ridiculous burst of speed that can take Link across the map in seconds. Recently, an easier method to trigger super swimming has been discovered by players that makes this whole process a lot easier on people's fingers, but it's still not exactly easy to pull off, just slightly less painful. And number three is the Strafe Lurch from Titanfall 2, a game with a lot of amazing movement tricks that speedrunners and hardcore fans have managed to figure out, but the move that really stands out to me is the ability called the Strafe Lurch. What's unique about this move, compared to everything else, is that it's an actual 100% intentional part of the game. The dev menu calls it jump underscore keyboard grace period, which isn't exactly the most natural sounding thing, so players just call it the Strafe Lurch. The general gist of this one is if you press a button after jump, you lurch in that direction. Normally, you're going to lose momentum after the jump, but if you manage to chain together multiple lurches, you can continuously build up momentum. It's kind of a complicated version of strafe jumping for Quake, which isn't exactly a surprise considering Titanfall 2 was actually made on the Source engine, which was built on a heavily modified Quake engine. Stringing together multiple lurches is known as tap strafing, and it allows some frankly ridiculous stuff. It's impressive in both speedrunning and in multiplayer, and Titanfall 2 already has a pretty high skill ceiling, but this stuff takes stuff to the next level. At number two is the Ganondor from Ocarina of Time, a classic trick in a classic Zelda. When you pull it off, basically seems like magic too, which in a game that's filled with magic, pretty impressive. Somehow by pulling out the bottle of bugs at a certain spot after killing the first boss, then going through the portal, instead of getting transported back to the start of the dungeon, you're immediately teleported to the end of the game. How anybody figured this out, I, I don't know, but it's one of the most infamous tricks out there, and it's old as hell. Uh, people knew about it well before the source code to the game leaked, which means they probably just found it through dumb luck, or a frankly ridiculous amount of perseverance, not sure which, not gonna try to figure it out. The basics of this trick is all about how those old games would access 
enormous memory. Nintendo 64 cards were so small, so the programmers at Nintendo had to cleverly reuse portions of the code for multiple purposes, which leads to bizarre glitches like this, where doing something totally unrelated makes the game think you're supposed to go to the last level. Whoever discovered this probably thought they were losing their mind. Uh, like, I don't really completely understand how it works now, but you know, yeah, it's there. And finally at number one, in Super Mario 64, going carpetless. This is less of an ability and more like multiple abilities strung together to do something seemingly impossible by human standards. One of the more impressive runs in Super Mario 64 is Carpetless, which is when someone manages to beat the Rainbow Road mission, Big House in the Sky, without using a magic carpet. Now, if you played this level, you know how insane that is. The entire mission is a carpet ride. Everything is super far apart, and the whole thing seems completely impossible to do without riding a carpet, but some have done it. Super Mario 64 is one of the more popular speedrunning games out there, and only three players at all, like in the world, have managed to pull off Carpetless. To do it, someone would have to successfully pull off multiple nearly impossible jumps in a row, hit multiple super backwards long jumps, then pull off whatever this is supposed to be at the end, uh, and it's completely insane. The fact that these are moves that are pulled off by people, not tool assisted, like just people, like people did these moves, that's what's crazy here. I can barely walk around for five minutes without falling off a ledge, and these guys make the impossible look easy. Uh, I don't know how any of this is even remotely possible. Possible. And that's it for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks. Right here on Game.